By now, it's well understood that COVID-19 is a highly infectious disease. One of the most effective ways to prevent the virus from spreading is home isolation. As the world in India fights this pandemic, COVID-19, it's important for all of us to be participants and help uh, in bringing down the number of cases. One of the ways to do that is by isolating yourself at home so that you don't spread the infection and give it to others. As the COVID pandemic is spreading, we find that patients are now coming in large numbers and majority, a large proportion of patients are having very mild symptoms. They actually do not require hospitalization and they can be well managed at home. Now there are certain guidelines which has been issued by the government. We need to follow this. If you have, are having very mild symptoms, you will have to follow the guidelines, you have to be seen by the doctor and then he can advise you properly for a home isolation. There are multiple factors that make a patient eligible for home isolation. The patient should be clinically assigned as either a mild case or a pre-symptomatic case by the treating medical officer. The patient should have the requisite facility at their residence for self-isolation as well as for quarantining family members. A caregiver should be available to the patient 24-7. The patient must sign an undertaking on self-isolation. The Arogya Setu app should be downloaded and should be active at all times. The patient must agree to monitor their own health and regularly inform the district surveillance officer. Patients suffering from immune-compromised diseases like HIV, cancer and transplant recipients are not eligible for home isolation. Patients over 60 and those with comorbid conditions like hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, chronic lung, liver or kidney disease, cerebrovascular disease shall only be allowed home isolation after proper evaluation by the treating medical officer. There are two main aspects of home isolation, the isolated patient and the primary caregiver. Here are some do's and don'ts to be considered. The patient in isolation must stay in a well-ventilated room, preferably with an attached washroom. Wear a triple-layered mask at all times. Change the mask every eight hours. Wash hands frequently with soap and water for at least 40 seconds or sanitize them with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Disinfect used masks using sodium hypochlorite solution before disposal. Follow respiratory etiquette. Take rest and drink lots of fluids to maintain adequate hydration. Strictly follow the physician's instructions. Clean frequently touched surfaces such as tabletops, doorknobs and handles with 1% hypochlorite solution. Waste such as masks, disposable items, food packets etc. should be disposed of as per CPCB guidelines. Report promptly in case any of the symptoms arise. The individual must not interact with other family members, especially the elderly, pregnant women, patients with comorbidities or children. Or share plates, tumblers, cups, cutlery and other utensils. Only one person is supposed to be the primary caregiver in the house. The primary caregiver must always wear a triple layered medical mask while dealing with the patient. Use disposable gloves while handling the patient. Clean the patient's utensils using either soap or detergent and water. The caregiver must also wear gloves while handling the patient's utensils. Use disposable gloves while cleaning surfaces or handling soiled linen of the patient. Avoid touching their own face, nose and mouth. Avoid direct contact with the patient's oral or respiratory secretions. The primary caregiver should regularly wash hands with soap and water for 40 seconds or sanitize them with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Provide food to the patient in their room. And establish a communication link between the caregiver and the hospital. Stay in frequent communication with the hospital and monitor their own health or report immediately if they develop symptoms of COVID-19. The front portion of the mask should not be touched or handled during use. If the mask gets wet or dirty with secretions, it must be changed immediately. Discard the mask after use and perform hand hygiene after disposal of the mask.
hands should always be washed or sanitized after removing the gloves or the mask. Hand hygiene must also be ensured following exposure to contaminated items in the patient's immediate environment like the patient's utensils, linen, towels or room surfaces. Hand hygiene must be ensured following contact with the patient. Hands should also be washed or sanitized before and after preparing food. And they must be washed or sanitized after using the toilet. Immediate medical attention must be sought if the following symptoms arise. Difficulty breathing, a dip in oxygen saturation, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, slurred speech or seizures, mental confusion or inability to arouse, developing bluish discoloration of the lips, weakness or numbness in any limb or face, and as advised by the treating medical officer. A patient under home isolation should end home isolation only as per the current government discharge policy. Uh, we should have physical distancing and not social distancing, meaning that uh, the patient should stay away at a distance of at least six feet from other people, from the caregivers, as well as should interact uh, by various means like using mobile phone, video chat with his uh, neighbors, relatives or his close ones. Home isolation is for asymptomatic people or who have mild symptoms. It's important to remember that both these type of people will become all right on their own and they really don't need much of uh, medical treatment, they need just symptomatic treatment. Therefore, if, if you have been advised to be isolated at home, it is safe and you need not worry and you should be confident that you will be all right while at home. If you have any problem or if you have any symptom that you're worried about, you can always call the helpline and get advice so that you don't get panicky about the symptoms.